Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So today we've got a menagerie of uh, assorted and sundry items to complete. And that includes putting a handle on a custom order knife using this piece of heartwood, uh, Cocobolo heartwood, straight from wherever Cocobolo grows. Client sent me that piece and uh, it's going on his knife and he graciously gifted me the rest of it. But that's, uh, that was gifted to him by uh, the uh, indigenous people that he worked with there as a missionary. So that's pretty cool. What else? We need to begin forging another pattern well of Damascus billet for a different client. And these are all stuff that have been on the list for a long time. And I'm finally getting down to the bottom of the list. I have some people that have been waiting for projects for too long. Well, let's get started on that and just take you guys along for the ride here. Putting a little pause on the Puko project just so I can get some of this stuff done. Um, got all the hatchets, the, all the hatchets sold quickly appreciate everybody who purchased one and that was awesome got those in the mail so we can continue on and for those of you wondering the next batch of chopping devices will be carving style hatchets those have been pretty popular too so i might actually do a little bit bigger batch of those but all that to say we got plenty of work to do appreciate you guys being here so let's get into it All right, so I have the 1095 all cut up and all the 15 and 20 pieces cut out. So it's time to go ahead and do a bunch of grinding and clean these all up again.
just got some Danish oil on this handle here. Looking pretty good. That's a nice piece of cocobolo. Okay, I've got our billet drawn out and we're up to, you know, about a hundred layers. So cut that into three pieces, stacked it up again, a forge welder again. And we're at, uh, you know, it's about 21 inches, but it's still about twice as thick as it's gonna be, about three quarters thick. So next we need to go ahead and put some patterning in this and it's gonna be just on one side because the other side's gonna go on the uh, sandwich. So we have our Damascus pattern welded cladding, and then this is the 52100 steel that's going to be the core or the edge steel in the center. And this is some pure nickel sheeting here, and that's going to go on either side. So basically we have to figure out how many pieces to cut this into. I think it's going to be four inches. Okay, so we have one more little thing to address here. Well, one thing anyway, and that is the width of our stock. You can see that this 52 and 100 stock is about a quarter inch wider. And I could just grind that off to fit our Damascus, but that would be wasting some steel. So. I'm gonna waste a little less steel and heat it up in the forge and forge it down on the power hammer. We'll lose a little bit from scale and clean up following that, but we won't have to just grind off a whole swath of steel here. that started out as 24 inches and it's now about 28 so we we gained some length about four inches and it's a little narrower than inch and a half but I think it'll be great for what we're doing here Okay, I have my nickel pieces for two of these, but I don't have enough nickel for this third billet here. I have some random pieces that had I somehow managed my stock better, I could have definitely had enough, but I, I don't. So I'm just gonna weld this billet up as is and it'll still be really cool. It just won't have that additional layer or line, cool, you know, bright line of nickel.
All right, so we have our billets forged out here, and this is going to be this this stuff here is going to be about what the uh, client my client requested, and then that other piece without the nickel sheet sheeting layers that's extra for another project, so it'll be groovy. This is uh, right at three sixteenths inch thick, and this comes in at about seven thirty seconds. And keep in mind that the ratios of the cladding to the core steel. The cladding was, I don't know, maybe 20% thicker, and that's by design because we still have to grind off this forge scale, but I'm going to do that after I normalize and anneal and thermocycle, which was also requested. So we're going to get those in the kiln here in just a second, but before we do that, and before I wrap up the video, I'm going to go ahead and grind off just a little bit here and uh, etch it real quick and show you guys what we have. All right, so I ground... Uh, a bevel of sorts and it's it's not totally centered but uh, pretty close yeah it's pretty close anyway so we ground a bevel and we'll go ahead and stick this in the ferric chloride for a minute all right there it is now this isn't a great representation because that's only a 120 grit belt so that's super coarse it needs to be sanded up a lot higher grit but you can see the uh, the pattern is pretty fine but not painfully so so it's a nice layer count nice uh, nice optics on it and see that nickel that bright nickel line there and then our core 52 100 steel well I'm trying I'm having a heck of a time getting this camera to to, to view this or I, I can't tell if it's uh, showing up in there or not but I went ahead and ground a little more off just right here and you can see how fine the pattern is right there. Got our nice nickel line. And keep in mind that the angle at which this is ground also affects how the pattern shows up. But anyway, um, it turned out pretty good, I think. All right, into the kiln. All right, guys, well, thanks for coming along in the shop these last couple of days here. Hopefully you enjoyed the content and maybe learned a little something from it get a little inside view on some of these things in a little bit different manner than some of the project videos do. Stuff's in the kiln, I'm gonna run some heat cycles on it. In the meantime, in between, I'm gonna go build a sheath for this knife and think up some new groovy ideas for videos along with continuing our Puko project. As always, appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next video.